Hello and welcome to another timeless gameplay video here in the preview event for Modern Horizons 3. So thanks again to Wizards for having me. And today we're taking a look at blue-green merfolk, but not just any merfolk. We're playing mana denial merfolk with a full playset of Harbinger of the Seas. This new card turns all non-basic lands into islands. It is symmetrical, which is also why I'm playing 8 fetch lands alongside a basic forest in my merfolk deck, so we can make sure to fetch our forest when we need it, so we can still cast our collected company, which remains a great curve topper for a deck like this. And then alongside Harbinger, we're also playing the full set of Spreading Seas, because of course our opponent can still use their fetch lands to get a basic to get around the Harbinger, and then now we can maybe play Spreading Seas afterwards to turn their basic into an island to completely shut the opponent out of the game. And then turning opposing lands into islands also has its benefit alongside a Master of the Pearl Trident, saying other merfolk we control get plus one plus one and have island walk. So now if the opponent controls an island, our merfolk can attack unblocked. So that's also a great way to close out the game if there's a bit of a board stall happening. And then we've got your other typical lords, Merfolk Mistbinder, as well as the Hex Catcher, which can help counter non-creature spells by sacrificing some of our merfolk. And then Silver Gill Adapt, a 2-mana 2-1 two that draws when it enters, assuming we can reveal a merfolk from our hand. And then at 1-mana we're playing the full set of Shoreline Scout, one of these digital cards that can turn a merfolk or a land into a tropical island, so it can give us a bit more mana fixing. And then it's also a blue creature that can hit pretty hard as soon as we play another merfolk or island. And then it's a blue creature that can also be sacrificed to Flare of Denial, and that's another huge upgrade for a deck like this, as we can potentially cast it for free simply by sacrificing a non-token blue creature, and then we get to counter target spell, otherwise we can just cast it for three mana as well but being able to tap out add more creatures to the board and increase our damage output while still having kind of this safety valve in case our opponent casts a board wipe or some scary combo card that would win the game on the spot we can still counter it with flare and there's no shortage of blue creatures we can sacrifice and a card like silver gill that replaces itself is also perfect to maybe sacrifice to the flare and then there's the scout at one mana as well that can explore and then at 3 mana, I'm playing, of course, a full set of Harbinger, and then two copies of our Merfolk God that can draw additional cards, protect the team, and gain Indestructible if we have enough Merfolk in play. So that's another staple of these Merfolk decks. And then I'm playing a two copies of Glasspool Mimic, just to increase the density of potential hits with our collected company. And then a Mimic can hopefully copy one of the Lords or other creatures that are already on the battlefield. And then I didn't have room for Marrow Regery, for instance. There's definitely a few other Merfolk, like Merfolk Trickster, you could also consider in a deck like this. So there's definitely room for customization, but Collected Company as our Curve Topper makes sense as well. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, 8 fetch lands, so we have more ways to access our basic forest, so we can still cast our green spells underneath our own Harbinger of the Seas. And then we've got a breeding pool we can fetch for, as well as one copy of Hedge Maze to surveil if we don't need an untapped land. And then Cavern making our merfolk uncounterable, as well as a few copies of Botanical Sanctum and an Ottawara for a bit more interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, keepable hand. We've got our Harbinger, so hopefully we'll see lots of non-basics. And uh, eventually I'll need to fetch a forest, so I still have green mana myself. Opponent might have some evoke creatures in hand if they're holding priority while empty-handed. And then Breeding Pool can turn into a tropical. Scout also a nice creature to sacrifice to a Flare of Denial if needed. Arid Mesa. Could play Master, could keep up Hexcatcher. Or just cast a Hexcatcher now. Kind of into Hexcatcher first, just because Master will be a great follow-up to Harbinger, making the team unblockable. And getting in the extra damage seems worth it over maybe keeping up two mana. So hope they don't fetch for basic, but they're probably gonna try and play around Harbinger somewhat. For now a shadowy backstreet. So our opponent on a Mardu colored deck. And yeah, Solitude pitching another Solitude. Probably have to counter here since I wouldn't be able to use 
X Gangster's ability. And then they wouldn't be able to flicker it with an Ephemerate, for instance, which they might have as well. That one we might have been able to counter. Now a Bloodstained Mire. So if I play Harbinger, they know to get a basic, and yeah, opponent does indeed have Reanimate for Solitude. So I guess I'll make them tap out here, or I can make them lose 5 life. I guess losing 5 is probably worth it then. So I need to fetch a forest now. Play Harbinger, opponent can fetch maybe a mountain or a swamp in response. Master will still be useful since they'll have at least one island. But yeah, this is currently not a race we're winning. And there's company. Sanctum enters untapped thanks to the Harbinger, so that's useful. And I think I wait for company until end of turn, so those evoke creatures won't be quite as effective. In case it's something like a fury. Alright, and uh, yeah, not the best set of cards. I guess we'll just go Harbinger Scout. Find a breeding pool, and now sea and sky a bit more exciting. So we can play that and master. Could still get exiled, potentially. But a good blocker for solitude. And yeah, opponent may not be able to cast too many spells with just a mountain. Master itself doesn't have island walk, but all other merfolk do. And yeah, there's Fury. That's the card we were fearing. Pitching a Lightning Helix. So take out Master. And Harbinger will die as well. They have to pay the ward. And they might have a way to bring back Fury. Although I guess without black mana that's a little trickier. And now Hexcatcher is pretty nice too. So can go ahead and attack. See what we draw. Opponent has successfully unlocked her lands now. So we could still be in a bit of trouble. Going back to the Collected Company, I could have opted for an extra Harbinger over Scout, but the Explore seemed useful. Alright, let's attack and see what happens. Alright, looks like we got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Got the turn 1 Scout. Can't actually play turn 2 Spreading Seas without blue mana, then maybe the scout will help. Alright, Windswept Heath can fetch for blue mana. Already have forest. And the grazer, so this might be Titan ramp deck or just using the new green flare. Blue green for now. So we can get Breeding Pool. And then all Spreading Seas to Forests, or we can just play Hexcatcher. Just maybe better. And wait for a more relevant land to enchant. Boots is acceptable. And a Whip. Okay. So there might be some equipment synergy at play. 
probably fine to let that happen. And then we'll play our god here. Maybe next turn copy the Hexcatcher, but more likely to cast company. Scoot Swarm, I see. So our opponent's going wide. So finding our Island Walk is going to be important. They already have Breeding Pool, but we also have Spreading Seas. So yeah, I have to imagine they're playing the Green Flare for Ramp. Especially with all these basics. Okay, so we can main phase Collected Company. Hitting Harbinger times two, probably. Attack with just our indestructible creature. And find another Spreading Seas. Well, we can try to get rid of their green mana next turn with double Spreading Seas. But they might have a bunch more. I see Nadu, that explains a lot. Boots. A one mana equip, synergizes with Nadu, synergizes with Skewed Swarm, so now it all makes sense. And a Bone Saw can also equip for one. But it looks like they have reached at the end of their turn. Okay, so double spreading seas still leaves them with the green mana. Can um Play Mimic, copy Hexcatcher, and then attack, see what we draw, and take it from there. Can probably attack all out now. Flare of Denial was huge. Even though they don't really need to cast another spell to go off with all these equipment. And then now Hedge Maze enters untapped. And Mimic can copy Hexcatcher once again. So move trigger Nadu. And now they've got a Scoot Swarm token. So yeah, this is where the Island Walk really needs to come into play. Since our opponent can just keep going off here. And more and more Scoot Swarms assemble. And the Recruiter, I guess, how they're planning to give the team haste. But luckily we can shut that down. Stomping ground, not making red mana. They might have a mountain, but they'll need to find it. So they're just moving around equipment. And yeah, they can just keep going for as long as they have mana. Twenty-eight scoot swarms, so our days of uh, attacking on the ground are over. We need island walk now. And yeah, next turn we're also just taking a lethal. Not gonna bother countering the bone saw. That's no island walk, so... Got to redraw with the Spreading Seas, and that's it. Yeah, if only we had the Flare to counter Nadu. And that's a Cavern, so yeah, that's it. Game over. Even if this draws Island Walk, it's too late. And uh, I guess we'll go all out. I guess I could have still drawn a Collected Company and then cast it at instant speed before blockers, so that was our only out. 
So definitely a reason to attack with everyone. Damage happens. Play Mimic. And die to a bunch of Scoot Swarms. Can cast a Flare here if we'd like. But uh, yeah, it's not going to matter. If you're trying to play this deck in other formats like Modern, there's an equipment called Shuko, I believe, from Betrayers of Kamigawa that can equip for zero mana. So that's an even better enabler for Nadu. In uh, Timeless, you'll have to pay at least one mana. But yeah, with some of these landfall cards, you can still combo off quite nicely in one turn. And there we see the Flare of Cultivation as well to synergize with Arboreal Grazer. They might be playing the Kami as well for one mana. So it's basically a landfall combo deck. At least Harbinger shuts down their fetch lands as well, so they don't quite get to make as much mana as they would like. Opponent now able to make red for Recruiter, thanks to Lotus Cobra. And they're gonna keep going here. I mean, I could try and counter the Flare. But again, we're dead on board, so... This is just uh, theatrics at this point. They just need to cast the Recruiter and turn the team sideways. GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got a relatively fair-looking Merfolk hand. Not quite timeless power level so far, but I'll give it a try. Turn one Swamp and pause. Probably means Dark Ritual. So we might want to get the Hex Catcher in play to counter some expensive non-creature spells. It's going to be a Thought Seize for now. We'll likely going for Hex Catcher. Opponent's also playing Basic Swamp, so we won't be able to punish them too much with our non-basic land hate. And now a Bowmaster, which yeah could be pretty effective against us. Now Scout the draw, so can play that one. I'm probably just pitching a Windswept Heath at this point. If we didn't draw the one drop, I just would have uh, fetched up Hedge Maze to at least surveil one. Yeah, double swamp. We wouldn't be able to really punish here. Possible our opponents playing some non-basic land hate themselves with a new two mana artifact. So I might want to fetch a basic. Another dark ritual, okay. And a grief can disrupt our hand. Master of Pearl Trident definitely better than Mistbinder, since we're also playing Spreading Seas to give the opponent an island. And then I'll take the one, I guess. Another Hex Catcher is not bad. Yeah, I think I'll keep up the Hex Catcher. Playing Mistbinder first maybe plays better around another Bowmaster, since otherwise Bowmaster can just take out the Hex Catcher but they might play some scary non-creature spell I need to counter. For now, they seem to be mostly on empty. And a death right, fair enough. That happens. And no attacks. So we've seemed to have survived the early assault. Now I can fetch Hedge Maze, play Mistbinder to protect Hexcatcher. And then I don't really mind attacking with a Shoreline Scout here. Opponent takes it. For now, 
Deathrite cannot make mana since there's no lands in Graveyard. I wouldn't mind drawing a Collected Company right about now. Take three. And we can fetch. Even though it may unlock a 4-drop for them. Still want to get my Surveil. Now by not getting our basic forests, I could put myself in an awkward spot if I uh, draw my 3 mana, turn all non-basics into islands. Spreading seas, probably not great with Bowmasters on the battlefield. Only great if we end up drawing into Master of the Pearl Trident at some point. So I think we can pass on that. And then find an island. Okay, so... Name Merfolk. And are we at a point where we can attack all out? Let's say our opponent has removal for one of my lords. Things could get kind of messy. Maybe Miss Binder can still get in there, though. So hit for nine. Okay. So we're on the front foot here. Could see them cast a Shieldred, maybe. It's gonna be a troll cycled for a swamp. And gets the gate to provide a bit of value next turn. And Windswept Heath is a draw, so that can now get basic forest, I guess. But uh, yeah, could go for an all-out attack. What happens if they don't have removal, hopefully? Then Grief trades for maybe a Hexcatcher. I mean, they're still probably chumping for the most part. This is where drawing a counterspell to give us that insurance would be nice too. Okay, damage happens, bones at two. And we'll see what they can come up with. One card left. Has to be a good one. The one ring, yeah, that counts. So if I want to successfully counter it, I guess we'll start by sacking the shoreline scouts. Then our opponent can use Deathrite to make a mana to pay for it. And then I'll just sack Hexcatcher itself and we'll still have a 2-2 two -two to attack for lethal. So that should do it. Exact is here. And now Flare of Denial would have been a perfect answer to the One Ring, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We've got the full Mana Denial plan in hand. And our opponent on an artifact deck could play the tapped Mimic. Since we might want to curve 2, 3, 4. And then we already have the forest in hand, so don't need to fetch it up. And a Shadow Spear. Okay. So for now, I guess we could play Breeding Pool. Spreading Seas the bridge. So it no longer makes red mana. The opponent's playing blue-red means that turning lands into islands is not going to be incredibly effective since they also have a lot of colorless spells. And the uh, synthesizer is a scary one, so that can take over in a hurry. Gotta hope for a good collected company, basically. Do have Flare of Denial at the ready. Kuzilex Unsealing. I think we let that resolve. Go to counter the seven mana artifacts instead. Mox Amber's fine. 
All right, I think we main phase company. And we hit Mistbinder Silvergill, I think. Hit for three. And next turn we get to try again. And then I don't mind sacking the Silver Gill to a Flare of Denial. Thought Monitor. I guess it's on cast, so they get to draw three cards regardless. But I can still stop the Synthesizer's ability here, which seems worthwhile. And then they don't get to draw off the Monitor either. But yeah, this turn's gonna get ugly. Possible I should have countered the Unsealing, but... Another Thought Monitor, draw three again. And now they get to trigger Synthesizer. And yeah, our opponent's going off. Another Enforcer. Yeah, this game seems over. This company is not going to be powerful enough to actually present lethal, even if we find our Island Walk Lord. And this Harbinger didn't accomplish anything. Well, hope our opponent draws from an empty library here. 24 cards remaining. We see the new Kappa Cannoneer as well. Nice payoff for these types of decks. Fourteen cards left. And there's a Cannoneer. Make some tokens. And this card to hand size. So, cast company, but don't have much hope. Did find double master actually, so can attack for nine unblockable. But that's not enough. All right, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, keepable hand, I would say. Maybe a little bit fair for timeless standards. Opponents playing the mirror match here with Shoreline Scouts. So Master of the Pearl Trident is going to be one of the better cards in the matchup. And uh, could make it uncounterable here. Or we could maybe start with a Silver Gill and give us more options going forward. Opponent could technically have Subtlety which can counter a creature spell. But I guess it technically doesn't counter, it just returns. So Cavern wouldn't really help there. Scout attacks. Yeah, they might have their own Hexcatcher or a Merfolk Trickster. Could just take the trade here. There's no islands on their side of the battlefield yet. And now we'll play an uncounterable 3-drop. So next turn we can double spell. Could have considered maybe fetching forests. In case they have their own Harbinger to turn non-basics into islands. Since then I wouldn't be able to play Mistbinder anymore. But it's just going to be a tapped hatch maze which is now an island for Master of the Pearl Trident. 
Alright, so Masters, the Merfolk I really want to resolve. So we'll start there. Merfolk have Island Walk. And then I could go for Forests, Mistbinder, play it. So we enable the ability here. And so we have Forests for future green spells. Our opponent's going to trickster, tap this down a response. Was to be expected. But we've got a pretty nice board state. Company, scary, would have been a reason to play the Hexcatcher earlier. But our opponent just hits the one creature. And Flower of Denial's good insurance. So, yeah, time to load up our lords. And this is a lot of damage. Draw Spreading Seas, one falls to three, and we've got Flyer Backup in case something goes horribly wrong. Kumena, that's beatable. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, don't have any mana denial in this hand. Also two tapped lands, so this seems a little too slow, even though I can eventually play Scout to upgrade something into a tropical island. Alright, this I can try. So turn one Scout, turn two Silvergill, and then turn three I would want to play the God. Maybe get rid of the Mimic, or I can just skip Scout and go turn to Adepts and be guaranteed 2 into 3. That's maybe the safer play. Opponent on a blue-red artifact deck, so turning everything into islands is probably not all that relevant in this matchup. But now we've got a silver gill we can sack to a Flare of Denial if needed. Three artifacts in play already. Opponent could have the counter spell here since they can pay for improvise. So I may not want to slam down a three drop, instead, it might be better to go one plus two. Do need to get a breeding pool for that to work. And don't need Scout anymore. Although I guess it does allow me to maybe go uh, Scout, Pitch, Harbinger, still play our author 3-drop. Harbinger could still be okay if we find our 2-mana Lord that gives Island Walk. Because then we can uh, attack past any blockers. And there's a Synthesizer, that card's just a little too scary to let resolve with so many artifacts already on the battlefield. If we already had an unblockable effect, it would be a different story. Okay, so play this. Can attack. And then I'll uh, play the land out. Probably wouldn't be super relevant. Yeah, they drew all the Darksteel Citadels here. Thought Monitor for just two mana. Could see some other seven drops. And those all would have generated constructs with a synthesizer. I'll take another Flare of Denial, maybe. Although we do need a way to attack past the Enforcer. Collected company is not bad, but again, they could still have Metallic Rebuke in hand, so we want to be careful. So we'll start by attacking, at least with this. It's probably it for now. Find a scout. 
code on Trumps. So now we can safely resolve company. And uh, yeah, not the best hit here. I guess we'll untap our creature. So just going scout plus harbinger would have worked out better. Their lands are still artifacts, so we're not taking that away with Harbinger's ability. So it's really not doing much in this matchup. And there's a Simulacrum with five, six artifacts on the battlefield, so they can play a one mana Mirror Enforcer and make a construct, and we won't have an easy way to attack past it. So yeah, this is bad. So we definitely need to top deck Master of the Pearl Trident now. So let's see if we can explore into it. Can no longer fetch Hedge Maze since this just turns into an island. Alright. Probably should have started by attacking, see what we draw. Am I attacking with everyone at this point? Can maybe push a little bit of damage, lose a lord. Yeah, I think that's fine. And there's a hatch maze. And no need to give them additional information here. Alright, don't expect next turn to be too kind for me. Gonna be facing a lot of artifacts. So I'm still hoping for a Master of the Pearl Tridents. Upon playing the Unsealing so they can draw three whenever they cast a spell now. Maybe they don't have any seven drops left. Alright, so in that case... We might get there. Flare of Denial as backup. And now Hexcatcher as well can pump the team. Okay, got pretty lucky here that they didn't have more follow-up. Otherwise we definitely would have died. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Pretty fair, all things considered, but functional. Can start with Cavern, play Scouts. And then since we already forest, may as well turn this into a tropical island. And looks like we might have a rematch here of the uh, equipment combo deck. This time we do have Master of the Pearl Tridents, so we're just waiting for a way to turn opposing lands into islands. And then I could offer the trade here just because we uh, potentially deny the flare from ramping the opponents. Could be beneficial to play Master first, so next turn I can play Master plus Hexcatcher, since I do have this forest in hand. Opponent plays the Boots, and now Harbinger, but our opponent already has an island. So, yeah, I think we just go for Master, and then next turn Hexcatcher plus another Master, makes sense. Third team will be unblockable. And there's a Scoot Swarm. By itself, not a huge threat. And now a Spreading Seas can maybe shut down their mountain. But I'm more interested in applying pressure. Second Master makes the first one unblockable too. And then next turn we should have Lethal. 
Another skew swarm. They really need their legendary creature for the deck to function. Possible they have some tutor effects for it too. But uh, yeah, GG's. Can attack all out. Alright, so we got to see our merfolk in action, and uh, yeah, the mana denial strategy can be pretty effective in some matchups, but in others the opponent might be playing a blue deck or an artifact deck that doesn't care about colored mana, so they can mostly ignore Harbinger of the Seas, or they might have an evoke elemental that they can still evoke for free and get rid of the Harbinger and then kind of unlock the rest of their hand. So I don't think Harbinger is necessarily going to be a format warping card, but if you're facing merfolk just Make sure to keep the Harbinger in mind and maybe fetch for your basics while you can and then uh, you're not going to get caught off guard. So going forward I might only play one or two copies of Harbinger, then forego the Spreading Seas package and make room for more Lords and Silvergill Adepts, since Silvergill is also quite nice alongside Flare of Denial, which has impressed me, unlike the Harbinger. So Flare is going to be a great card in these decks going forward and uh, gives you another nice tool to beat combo decks. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.